Hello there, Eagles. You are flipping in fifth with me, Mrs. G. Today we're going to be talking about topic 11, lesson 7. And the learning target I would like you to write down at the top of your page is, I can understand how multiplying fractions and mixed numbers will change the size of the product. Go ahead and pause the video and make sure you have this written down on top. Here are two of today's vocabulary words. The first word is scaling. That is the ratio of the length in a drawing or a model to the length of the real thing. So for instance, if this car in reality was five foot wide by eight foot long, and we wanted to just do a, a toy model of it, we might turn it into five inches by eight inches. It's going to be smaller, but it will still look exactly like this car, just a shrunken down version of it. Our other vocabulary word today is resizing. That's to change the size of something, but keeping the exact ratio. Again, the car, is the same, it's just a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna show you today how you use multiplication to accomplish that. So why in the world do you need to understand this? Well, let's take a look at this guy here. He built an entire replica of Washington DC and the Capitol building, the buildings around it, all out of Legos. I mean, who doesn't love Legos, right? I'm sure you've seen these before, either at Legoland or someplace else. They're amazing and they look exactly like the real thing, except they're just smaller. So how did they figure out how to do this? Well, they did scaling. Another example would be to look at a map. Now here in this map, it certainly looks like we could go from Wonderscope to Veterans Park with in a, just about 30 seconds, right? But actually this is a much bigger distance. However, a map shows us how to get from one place to another just on a smaller scale. And finally, for those of you who absolutely love art, I know there's a lot of you who like to draw, and you think a lot about scaling when you are doing your art projects, because obviously, as they did in the movie Zootopia, the mouse should be much smaller than the fox, right, in real life? Well, let me show you how the animators actually used multiplication as scaling to make Zootopia. One of the most complicated decisions we ever made was we wanted the scale to be true to the true life size of the animals. A lot of these kind of talking animal films take the big characters like elephants, you know, and kind of shrink them down and small characters like mice and kind of scale them up to create this one kind of homogenous size. And we said like, you know, we really want to celebrate what makes animals different. Elephants should be big and mice should be small and we should kind of play the scale true as we can. In our scale, one giraffe is 95 mice. So how do I actually set a camera to shoot that scene? How do you get a tiny little rabbit and a big elephant in the same shot together without it looking weird? It was a rough challenge, but the results, that's what makes it unique. Yeah, you're a real hero, lady. You need to have ramps, you need to have water fountains that have different levels, you have to have sinks and desks that can adjust, and all this stuff that seems like so much trouble to get into the film is what makes it. So pretty cool, especially for those of you who really love to draw and want to do animation someday as a job. You will definitely be using scaling in your job if you do that. So what does this have to do with math? Well, you have to look at multiplication as scaling. Think in your head, how does multiplying by a fraction change the product? Well, here's a no duh, but I'm going to show you what I mean by scaling. Here we have 12 times 1 half. 12 is a whole number and 1 half is a fraction. 1 half is smaller than 1 whole, right? So when you multiply a whole number by a fraction, you need to put a one underneath the whole number so that you can multiply across. 12 times one is 12, one times two is two. Well then, in order to figure out, because this is an improper fraction, in order to figure out and simplify that, we need to do 12 divided by two, and that equals six. So look what I'm talking about. Here, our original whole number was, and here our product was, hmm. So what effect does the fraction, multiplying by the fraction, have on the whole number? Well, when you multiply a whole number, like the 12, 
by a fraction, in this case one half, the product or the answer is always going to be smaller than that whole number. So 12 is much greater than 6. 6, the product, is smaller than 12. Go ahead and write this down under your notes. When you multiply a whole number by a fraction, the product or the answer is smaller than the whole number. So let's try another one so I can prove it to you. Here we have 2 times 1 third, a whole number times a fraction. So if what I said was true, our product is going to be smaller than the 2. Well, let's go ahead and multiply it out. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Is 2 thirds less than 2? Hmm, that's right. The product is smaller than the whole number. Did I even have to do math? No, because what you wrote in your notes is anytime you multiply a whole number by a fraction, the product will always be smaller or less than the whole number. But why? Scaling, of course, this is exactly what we're talking about in this lesson. But guess what? It can go a different way as well. So we're back to our picture of our Lego guy, right? So what he did was he took the dimensions of every single thing in the Capitol building and he multiplied it all by the same fraction. Same thing with the flag. He took the real life dimensions of it and multiplied it by the same fraction he multiplied the Capitol building by. And these people, if he didn't multiply everything by the same fraction, the scale would be off. In other words, the flags might be bigger than the Capitol building or the people, and that would look pretty funny, would be even taller than the Capitol building. But by going ahead and multiplying everything that he wanted to build by the same fraction, then he was able to get everything to be on scale. So what if you want to make something bigger? We just learned how to make everything smaller. What if, for instance, you had a scale model of a building that you presented because you're an architect and then they want to actually build it in downtown Kansas City. So you have to make that scale model bigger. Well, let's look here. Here we have 12 times one and one half. 12 is the whole number and one and one half is a mixed number, right? Well, let's go ahead and multiply and see what happens when we multiply a whole number by a mixed number. So we're going to change the mixed number into an improper fraction. 1 and 1 half equals 3 over 2. And then we're going to make this 12 over 1. So when we multiply it across, 12 times 3 equals 36. 1 times 2 equals 2. So then we know we have to multiply or divide 36 divided by 2 to get our answer. And our answer is 18. So look at this. When you multiply a whole number by a mixed number or an improper fraction, something bigger than one, what happens to the product? What happened when we multiplied a whole number by an improper fraction or a mixed number? The product was bigger. Go ahead and pause the video and write that down. When you multiply a whole number by an improper fraction or a mixed number, then the product gets bigger. So what if, this one might throw you for a loop, we're gonna multiply 12 over 12 times two. So hmm, 12 over 12 is also known as one whole, right? Because if a pizza had 12 slices in it and we wanted to eat the whole thing, we would eat all 12 slices. So 12 over 12 is one whole. So we're gonna change 12 over 12 into one, times two, and we know that equals two. So when you are multiplying by a whole number, or one whole, a fraction that is one whole, you are going to end up getting the same exact product, right? So when we multiply one whole by a number, the product stays the same. Go ahead and pause the video and write that down. Okay, so go ahead and try this one. Don't multiply it. I just want you to use the rules that we've just learned about scaling and think about it with common sense. And tell me, two and one half times one and two thirds, will it be less than, greater than, or equal to one and two thirds? Go ahead and pause the video, put your answer down, and come back and see if you're correct. Coming back in five, four, three, two, one. Did you get greater than?
Good job. Well, that's because we know that one and two thirds is going to be our product. So we know if we're multiplying a number by a mixed number, because this is greater than one, then this is going to be greater than the product. Okay, go ahead and you try now. Here are your practice problems for tonight. Remember, don't multiply. I want you to just look at the problem, look at our rules about scaling that you wrote down in your notebook and decide which symbol belongs in the box. Greater than, less than, or equal to. Pause the video, fill in those circles, and then let's come back and see if you're right. Coming back in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, here are your answers. Number one, here we have a mixed number, right? But here's our number and we're multiplying it by a fraction. This means we're multiplying by something less than one. So obviously it's going to be less than four and four fifths. One and two sevenths times five over five, remember that equals one whole. So anytime we multiply by one, the identity property of multiplication tells us it's gonna be equal to the same number. Here, we have two and two fifths times a fraction. Remember, a fraction is less than one. So that is going to make this less than two and two fifths. Again, two over two is equal to one and the identity property of multiplication tells us anytime we multiply by one, we're gonna get the same answer. So that's gonna be equals. And here, we're multiplying this number, two and two sevenths, by a mixed number. And we know from our rules of scaling that when you multiply by a mixed number, because it's bigger than one, that your product is also going to be greater than, okay? So be sure you've checked your work and you write how many you got correct out of five. Be honest, this is not for a grade. This can be very confusing for some kids. That's why I want you to go back and rewatch the video if you did not get anything better than, let's say, four out of five correct. Go back and watch it and really pay attention to what I'm saying because it makes common sense. It's common sense if you actually just sit down and think about it. Honestly, fill out that self reflection. Could you teach a friend or are you still confused? And fill in the space for any questions you still have. I look forward to practicing multiplication as scaling with you in class coming up, and I hope you have a great night. Bye-bye.